Yes, hello and welcome to our March webinar, uh, which we have titled uh, Protecting Your Data, What Lies Behind the Cloud. Uh, so together with me, uh, Harvard from Botanical Software and Candide, we have Dr. Wahid Harsad. Hello there, nice to see you all again. And the immutable Greg, immutable, I almost said, uh, Greg Payton from the Doors Arboretum. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm uh, so honored when they consider me a guest for this. Uh, I consider myself just sort of the last person at the party that won't leave, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're always a very welcome guest. So, so and that, no, it's always uh, great to, to have somebody. Uh, so as everybody knows, we don't run a botanic garden. So we rely on you guys to understand the, the things, the, the challenges you're dealing with. and. Uh, this is why this topic came up as well. We know um, that uh, cloud computing is uh, definitely uh, very much a topic of the day, or, or in 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 sort of in in uh, what many people's uh, on many people's minds, let's say. And and we uh, also know that quite a lot of people are a bit unconcerned about it. They are not sure about it. And and this is the reasoning behind our webinar today. We want to make people to come out of this webinar feeling a bit more confident about what it's all about and uh, feeling a bit more confident about the future as well. Um, so so uh, without any further ado, we're gonna go through the slides. As always, if you have any questions, uh, pop them into the chat function. We're gonna do a few um, uh, sort of uh, polls today as well, just to get a sense of where people are in, on this topic. And then we also gonna have some room for a questions discussion at the end. Uh, we won't do any breakout rooms today, uh, but uh, at least we will have some time to discuss uh, this wonderful topic. So uh, we're gonna talk about uh, trying to demystify well, what is cloud or what is cloud computing? Because that's actually what it is. That's more of a correct term, uh, but just using the term cloud, it's more of a sort of a simplification of of, uh, of what, what is more correctly termed cloud computing. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about the two options that people have today. It's uh, arguably the only two options you have. There might be some technological variants of this, but in general, there's either you have your data and your processing on site or on premise, as in at your office or on your desk or whatever, or you have it on the cloud. Those are the two big options. Uh, uh, I'm not going to spe speculate more on alternatives than these two. Uh, then we're going to talk a bit about the Hortis and how we approach this, and then also talk about disaster preparedness, uh, and 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 then uh, something uh, about uh, that we worked on with Hortis as well, which is called Audit Trail. So, so uh, all in all, uh, giving you some sort of a picture of uh, how uh, your data can be more secure or, or, and then have a bit of a confidence about, uh, about your data and your security around that. Um, so uh, before we start then, I mean, thought we sort of do uh, a bit of a poll before I, I'm just gonna start, uh, give me, forgive me a second here, but you can scan this code. We haven't started the actual uh, Mentimeter yet. So give me a second, but for those who want to roll in this poll, um, on on uh, on uh, your your computer or your smartphone, you can scan this code. Uh, Wahid well, will send out a, 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 a link on the chat if you want to just use the laptop or you have in front of you. So we want to just give you what are the associations you have when you heard the word cloud computing. Um, is it are they good or are they? Uh, yeah, that's basically it. So so we're going to give you a few minutes on that. Uh, I'm going to sort of bring up the, the, the cloud oh. here. And, and then you can type in what words that springs to mind. If any, there might not be any. Here we go. That's good stuff. Of course, I'm seeding it with three, uh, three good words, so. <laughs> No, yeah, we want to have all the, are you nervous about it or are you excited about it? Do you feel uneasy about it? Or do you think, yes, this is great stuff for, um, 
we see it here that um, everything everywhere, that's a good one. Download. Uh, Peggy, I think more bandwidth is the uh, the uh, cry we all need. <laughs> <laughs> Data leak is an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a we should have. A, I don't know the the word cloud can't pick up the negatively, uh, but it's good good to see. Uh, that's a good one. Don't know what it is. Okay, that's good. Um, cost effective. Yeah. I'm letting this run for another minute or so so people can think of it. Uh, I don't know if you see any other uh, negative here, Wahid, do you? Data leak is the one. Uh, well, don't know what it is. It's, it's a fair one. And and tether. and tether? Is that releasing yeah. being able to be more free, I suppose? I suppose right. so, yeah. I guess the word uh, reliable. Well, yeah, it's it's actually reliable. If it said reliability, you might think whether you would have access to it or not. But it uh, should be reliable. You hope. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I think we'll leave this going in the background if somebody is still doing it. But uh, what is interesting for me, at least, is that there's not many people who have some really sort of. Uh, nasty, well, I wouldn't use the word nasty, but negative connotations there, apart from the uh, data leak, which is a very good point. I mean, you've heard, heard, especially in the early days of cloud computing, you would have these scandals, uh, not so much anymore, but um, so that's interesting. Uh, any other observations from you, Wahid or Greg or anybody else that worth mentioning here? Seems mostly, uh, it's mostly positive or at least uh, knowledgeable uh, on the subject. Okay, yeah, so that's that's very helpful. Thank you. That's great stuff. Um, we, we're sort of uh, wanted to really know because it's hard to get a quantifiable kind of insight into what people really feel about these things. So, so that's very good. Thank you. Uh, so um, then we can carry on with some slides here, which is loading for some reason and not. <laughs> Uh, it's on the cloud, so maybe. Uh... <laughs> That's your problem. Needs <laughs> that... more bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now this is a bit weird. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna uh, just gonna stop this one. I don't know if that. There we go. I don't know if that has any commentation that it might have had. I don't know. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. That's great stuff. Okay, so uh, now hopefully you can answer one of these questions. Uh, that came up, uh, what is cloud computing? Or what is uh, also coined as the cloud? Um, and and it's quite hard to come up with a very snap, snappy one sentence, one liner to define this. Uh, but this is a, a version of what you might find when you look at Wikipedia. So, so what it is, it's basically a, a concept of having on demand computing power somewhere. Uh, and it's typically on the internet. There is some, uh, it doesn't say internet here, but normally it would be on the internet, but there are some cloud platforms that are not necessarily using the internet as infrastructure, but that's a different story. But in general, so think about it as a place where you can just basically get some machine power to do computing. That, that's it really. Uh, but it, it's also uh, typically happens on, in multiple places uh, at the same time. And, and that is uh, typically multiple data centers. So that's one of the, the strengths of it as well, that not only is it uh, like a, just like a logical place where you can get some, some, some power, a supermarket or whatever you might think of it as, and then uh, it's distributed and it's also uh, sharing resources. So you can have machines that are, are, are waiting to do, do a job and then uh, you can share that with somebody else because, uh, so, so it's in, in general, if you want to compute at home, versus on the cloud, in theory, it should be more cost-effective, more environmental, et cetera, to have it, uh, you know, to use the cloud computing resources uh, because you're sharing a machine with many others uh, or sharing many machines with many others. Um, and the last part there is, of course, it's scalable. It doesn't say that here, but you can have something that requires a lot of uh, munching on occasionally 
and, and, and then that resource can be available to you when you need it. And some others can use it when they need it. So that's another thing, having very powerful computing power uh, on, at home or on, on your own or in your office. Uh, you can imagine your office is only basically busy, maybe eight to 10 hours a day. And the rest of this wonderful expensive investment has to lay dormant waiting for people to come back to work. So, so all these things sort of explains, well, uh, yeah, the narrative here is it's, it's, uh, you can get more power because uh, uh, to, to a less cost, you might say. So there are some other implications here, but this is you know, what is cloud computing in general, think of it as an on-demand, it's computing on the tap. It's a bit like having, no, I'm not going to go into analogies. <laughs> uh, okay, so, but uh, I hope that was slightly, you know, people felt a bit more certain about what this is. Um, I can, uh, ask if you had planned to make any comparisons yet to something that they might use every day that's already cloud computing. For yeah. example, their, their, their email program. If you use any kind of online email, Yep. Um, any kind of Google Docs or Sheets or anything like that, you're already using cloud computing. You know, drive yep. storage, that's all That's all cloud computing. Yeah, well, you know, all these social media platforms are, are, are cloud computing platforms Facebook, like yeah, Facebook right. and Twitter and, uh, and, yeah. and it's all, yeah. It's designed to then, uh, yeah, survive, uh, you know, with, yeah, we'll talk about that a bit later, but yes. So, so we're all using these kind of technologies today. Uh, sometimes we know we do it and sometimes it's a bit more un unclear, but uh, it's very much the, the modern way, way of dealing with computing challenges. Yeah, to answer Elaine's question real quick, what is not cloud computing? So you have a uh, program installed on your server in your office that isn't connected to the internet and you access that. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of people in our industry use, you know, GIS software. So you've uh, downloaded your uh, uh, S3 program and you open it up on your computer and you use it. And uh, uh, we've actually switched to the cloud versions of GIS software. So we use uh, um, the uh, online uh, S3 options. So you basically open up a browser and you can do all your, your, uh, uh, your uh, GIS work online from any location because all the data is stored online. So you can do it from home. You could be on a trip somewhere. Uh, as long as you have a uh, Wi-Fi connection, then you can access your uh, GIS layers and and to do that kind of thing. So it's uh, it's it's what's available online as as opposed to what's only on your um, uh, on your own computer or on your own server locally. Yeah, one one very classic transition that you, many people have seen is is the classic uh, office suite from Microsoft, for example, uh, Word and Excel, uh, which uh, has now gone over to Office 365, which is the cloud version of that. And Google has a cloud only product that is sort of trying to mimic and do the same thing where you have uh, spreadsheets and documents all on the cloud instead of on your computer. So um, yeah, many, many, many good examples of, of uh, successful uh, cloud implementations, uh, you could say. So, uh, the question is then, is cloud safer than on-premise? Uh, so on-premise, just to repeat, that means having it in your office. Uh, and and uh, we've just picked up a few things here. Uh, we can, there's a reference to an article we picked from here, so we could put that in when we post this video online. But uh, uh, the first thing is that high availability, that's one thing that cloud offers and, and, and meaning that you can switch on whatever tools you have and you can apply, use, do some light work on the Sunday or, or on the way from the, on the bus uh, at, after closing hours, et cetera. Uh, if you have on-premise, you really need to make a lot of effort to make stuff uh, or any, any, anything you have on your on-premise having a high availability it requires a lot of investment. It is non-trivial. So uh, with, with these cloud serious cloud providers, they offer a very high level of availability. Uh, and uh, we're talking about 99.95% or something. So, so uh, that's bonus number one, you might say. Uh, does that have any relation to safety? Maybe not, but it's, there's a benefit out, 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 of, out of the box. Then the second part, which some people forget, I think, is physical security. People actually breaking in and, and running away with a server. You know, that, that those things happen. And, and the security at, at, uh, at, a, at the big 
uh, sort of uh, data centers is, is second to none compared to what you might have at your office. I don't know what kind of secret you have at your office, but you know, the, the, these things happen. So, so uh, it's still uh, an investment that you need to make. And, and uh, by having it on the cloud, you don't actually need to pay much money uh, for, for the physical, uh, because that's part of the whole deal. So there's another benefit there. Uh, the third thing, which I, I think is also worth mentioning, is technical security. And that means that everything you have in your house is up to scratch on the latest versions uh, in terms of network and, and uh, operating systems. That's how hackers come in. They they know they hear about weaknesses and then they 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 manage to hack in. So so uh, that requires very skilled professionals at your garden or wherever you are to make sure you're really ready for anything. Uh, so these, uh, what should we say, renowned cloud providers, they obviously are at the bleeding edge on that. Uh, they, they live on, on this, having a secure platform. So, so that helps you uh, to make sure you, you're basically outsourcing that question. Uh, you obviously need to make sure whatever you do at, on, on premise is secure as well, but the less valuable things you have on premise, the more secure you are by definition. Um, the fourth thing I'm mentioning here, it's a bit techy, but I, I feel it's worth mentioning, uh, and that is a net network segmentation. So if some, some, uh, some um, what should we say, uh, bad person wanted to try to sort of uh, log in and get access to your data, uh, they would know where you are because as a, an on-premise system typically have only a few entry points and those those uh, those addresses basically basically like a physical house you can see your front door and then you can break bring their their crowbar and start trying to get in <laughs> the same analogy can be used for your network whereas a cloud network has uh, because it's a cloud thing it uses network segmentation so so even though there are many doors but they're all very secure uh, and and it really uh, in some way uh, makes it much harder for them to get in uh, for for that reason um, uh, the the last uh, the fourth thing or fifth thing is uh, uh, encryption. Uh, having sort of your whole uh, on-premise setup being very secure with encryption all the time is quite hard to achieve. Uh, whereas with cloud cloud offers military grade encryption out of the box, so it's it's designed for this. So so um, it makes it easier to be secure in that respect. Uh, whereas doing it on-premise is a bit more complicated or it requires a bit more uh, thought, thoughtfulness, you might say. Uh, I don't know if anybody has anything to add on those four, five, five things I've mentioned already. Uh, I, uh, I can mention one thing back to uh, point three, you know, you were talking about having the uh, technology um, on your own site to stay up to date. Um, uh, I mean, how many people here would have a website for the uh, garden? you know, you have a website. Is it from a server that you have in your own physical building that you have to keep totally up to date constantly and somebody could hack in and destroy your server? Or do you contract out with a, uh, a, uh, a cloud provider to host your website for you elsewhere? Um, not every garden has the capacity to hire a full IT department and have um, staff that stay up to date and update uh, all the latest security risks um, but yeah, you know, I mean, Elaine mentioned, you know, being at a college, you know, you oftentimes do have those sorts of resources, but, uh, you know, we don't hear, uh, we have one IT person that'll, you know, buy us new laptops and set up uh, printers. So it's not, uh, it's not, <laughs> I mean, high end work, but, uh, so, you know, we really rely on having, uh, the professionals and, you know, many of these, uh, these, uh, companies that host these will, you know, you've heard the stories about hiring what they call like the white hat hackers, you know, the ones that are I mean, hacking for good to see if they can get in. Yep. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're, they are hired by the company to make sure that their security is up to, up to snuff. So uh, that's a good uh, option. Just want to mention that. Yep. Yep. That's a good, good, good call. Uh, uh, what? Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing to, to add here is basically, uh, or, or, by having it on the cloud, you're you're sort of outsourcing all this to the experts. Uh, they they all the big ones, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they're all they have to be top of the game here. If not, they they go out of business. So so in that respect, it, it's uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so the last thing to mention is what are the risks? Well, uh, as far as we see, you know, it's like two two big ones. 
data privacy. So that's maybe basically uh, who, who is managing your data. Uh, in, our, in this case with us, it's, it's us, but then also the provider we use. So, so, so you need to make sure that that's handled with, with, uh, with great uh, sort of respect and according to uh, the, the sort of, um, the, yeah, the regulations that are around. Uh, and then the other part is misconfiguration that people can actually set up things that are insecure by, by design. Uh, so, so that's again a, a, a trust question. It's quite hard. Obviously, you can you can run penetration tests and those kind of things to 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 reduce risks like that. That's what we do, as as in ma making sure that misconfiguration is not uh, not an issue, but uh, it requires obviously skills. So, um, the the bottom line is uh, cloud. Uh, I was thinking the analogy is: is it safer to have your money in your back pocket than in the bank? I suppose maybe that's a good analogy. I'm not sure <laughs> these days, but uh, there is some 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 sort of parallels to these things that um, uh, makes it less risky uh, if you have it on the cloud. Uh, that's for sure. Okay, uh, I know this is some of this is a bit techy, so we're trying to keep it light, but uh, we wanted to go into some depth there anyway. Forgive us for that. Um, so. The next slide is even worse in some ways, but we wanted to mention this because um, from, from our point of view, um, uh, we uh, wanted to, we have updated our, uh, uh, on, on our website, hortus.com, there's this page called security. Uh, so this is uh, for, for people to share with, especially IT people. Um, uh, the one thing we wanted to mention here is uh, how the application is secure, because you might have your data on the cloud, but when you're actually getting data from the cloud and putting data into the cloud, how, how, why can't people see that on, you know, when it's coming and going, why can't any other uh, people pop in and steal your data and stuff like that? So, so that's a big topic. <laughs> so the other thing we want to say is that we, 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 all the traffic uh, with Hortis is, is, is encrypted. And, and that's basically what we say, if you're going to use the cloud, you should have all traffic encrypted for sure. The other part is that we use a platform or, or an authentication uh, model called open authentication or open authorization, which uh, is an open standard used by all the big players. And it's uh, the reason it's good um, because it's open. It means that it's tested to to uh, to its uh, what shall I say to, to to its extremes, you might say. Uh, and and uh, and by doing so, we are making sure that every time you make a call, there's what you call the endpoint protection. So we there's uh, some 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 bits in those calls that make sure that these calls are made from a reliable source to et cetera, et cetera. This is a very very, very complex dance, but um, uh, so I'm I'm putting this slide up here so people can share this with your IT staff uh, to make sure that uh, if you if if there are some concerns about this. Uh, so uh, there's an analogy used by this auth zero or OAuth, which is uh, thinking of it as somebody parking your car at a hotel with the valet parking. So you give somebody a key, and then they can go and park the car and you get the key back when you're finished. Uh, that's the kind of analogy. I'm not going to go through this workflow, but but it's um, it's well uh, well thought out and tested, and uh, they the industry standard on securing your data. So so that's the short version of that. Uh, okay, uh, great stuff. Okay, so now we want to just also give you some more sense of, of uh, confidence. Uh, and that is uh, how uh, Greg mentioned this uh, earlier today is about what about backups and how, how, I, how is my data? How do we sec secure the data? Well, uh, so what we do is first of all, the cloud in itself, this, this is one important thing that a lot of people may not realize. And part of the way it's designed is that in the old days, when you took backups, you took backups because you were afraid your machine, your hard disk might crash. That was the standard, you know, or the machine might break down for another reason. Now with the cloud setup, the, the risk of that happening is, is close to zero or probably zero uh, because the way it's designed with multiple machines sharing responsibilities. So if one falls down, the, the rest of the system will still carry on. Uh, and, and, and the same with disks, et cetera. So, so uh, the reason for backups are, are different. Uh, it's more for um, if anything else goes really wrong. Uh, and, and with our setup, we have three different strategies going parallel. One is uh, continuous backup. So the backup is basically able to restore at any given point in time, going back seven days. 
uh, which is very, very, very useful if you need it. Uh, this is the kind of thing we don't think we need ever, but but it's still very, very nice to know that we have it and we, we always we can test to see that it works. And then that same thing we have as a daily backup, uh, which is sort of like a belts and then we have braces and then we go for airbag and, and then we go for parachute, etc. So, uh, and then the last thing is the daily backup to a different cloud platform as well. Uh, so that uh, if uh, for some very strange reason, this is going to the extreme, but, but if uh, Google not shouldn't work for some reason at all, and we still have a, a backup that we can restore. So, so this is a very uh, excessive, but it's also uh, as far as you can go, you might say. So, uh, but point out, we don't expect to use any of these backups ever, <laughs> which is even more interesting. Uh, so you can see, read more about that on our security page. Um, going further. And now we want to also mention something. Can, we, before yep. you move on, if I can add one point, um, just, yep. as a, uh, just as an example, um, you know, we used to have all of our data on a local server. Um, and again, the fear of that server, and that actually happened. We had lost a server, it went down, we had lost data. We actually had to try to scramble to, Put things back together. It was a real hassle. Um, you know, there's there I mean, are likely still a few points of data that were lost forever, um, but we've moved on. Um, we always took backups. The uh, system was on a SQL Server. It was set up to do a uh, uh, to do the the irregular backups. I would even take the uh, extreme of uh, copying the full backup from the server to a cloud storage system so that if a, I mean, a tornado fire, some natural disaster came through and destroyed all of our servers here, the uh, data would still exist somewhere else. Then it got to the point that uh, the file was so big, it uh, took forever. I, I was, I was uh, storing backups on old hard drives and storing them in fireproof cabinets and just crazy. But now since we switched to the cloud, the uh, cloud platform, it's not my responsibility. The data is still there and safe. So, yep. Just some examples. <laughs> That's very good. Good, good, good example. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I remember the old days when, uh, yeah, physical, uh, physical tapes and whatnot. Um, uh, so the one thing we wanted to mention here as well is something we introduced in Hortis. Uh, uh, it was released uh, on 1st of March, and, and that is, uh, a, a, it's, a, it's a term called immutability. We don't need to understand exactly what that means, but the effect is that we have a full audit trail. Uh, so what, what that means is that every time a person makes a change to the plant records, uh, we create a new revision of that record. Uh, and the reason we mention this in this context is in terms of backups and restores, is that you're, you have then a full history of everything going back from the beginning, uh, which gives you a lot of opportunities in terms of uh, if somebody makes a mistake, uh, you can actually figure out you know, what, was, what was the original data and how is it now? So you can manually fix that maybe. Um, it, it helps you uh, with also with deletes. We're not gonna have deletes. We're just gonna have soft deletes or archiving. So if somebody deletes something they didn't mean to delete, you can actually bring it back in again. Uh, and and uh, the other part is draft approval, which we are working on. Uh, so you can have a revision that is more like a candidate for the next version of the same data. Uh, and, and the third thing is analytics, like we uh, basically can offer uh, almost like a time machine, because you can imagine then you, when you have the data, you can have the, basically your collection and what it looked like for a given point in time going back from the start, which is quite intriguing in terms of how you can analyze your data and how you can use your data. So, so this will not only give you a sense of security in terms of your data is not going to lose, you know, you, you basically have every sort of layer of data going back, uh, but you also have uh, the ability to analyze it. And, and uh, so we're very excited about that. And, and, and that, that sort of, um, goes back to the question about, do you then ever need a backup that's old? Theoretically, no, because you have the data you had at that point in the system already. 
So that's quite a fascinating thing as well. We, we know that these stories that people wanted to sort of bring up a backup like it was a year ago because that's when somebody deleted something, uh, for example. So these kind of scenarios will then also be non-relevant, you might say. So that's quite a quite an exciting thing. Um, uh, I don't know if you, Wahid, if there's anything else we can add to this. Uh, Uh, so if anybody wants to look at the word immutability, you could do that. Uh, uh, but uh, it's it, it's very 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 powerful, uh, and 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 it requires a lot of engineering. But now that we have it, uh, we are really going to sort of be ready for for the future. You might say in terms of collection analytics and 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 uh, and how data can be managed uh, over time. Uh, the last slide we wanted to mention here as well is, is, in, in, is a slide from a previous session, but it's worth repeating because it's uh, one of the super upsides to cloud computing is the fact that there's no installation and software management on premise. Uh, and, and this particular uh, research, uh, there's different indications depending on it, but we've seen that uh, uh, there's one statement here that you can spend up as much as four times to actually looking after the software and then buying it. Uh, these are the extreme cases, but it's decidedly more expensive to look after uh, on-premise products, regardless of how they are. Uh, and and uh, that that is uh, one one very important advantage of cloud uh, services or cloud computing in general. So so that's uh, worth worth keeping in mind as well. Uh, so total cost of ownership seventy cent and less than on-premise. That I think that sort of a statement is a bit. It's hard to generalize, but it's definitely more expensive. That's for sure. On premise. Okay. Yeah, there's a point about the uh, the um, uh, the map on the on the cloud data centers. So Google is a bit behind on. So we are using Google, but I know they're planning date uh, about the, the data centers distribution. Uh, is is there's I don't think they have a data center in Africa, but I think there's that's on the table coming soon. Uh, I know uh, Microsoft have uh, something in South Africa, etc. So so yeah, it's uh, they are definitely underserved compared to other regions. Um, but one thing to even if you're not don't have a data center in your country, uh, with fiber the the sort of latency is still quite low, so you, you can. Easily, we 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 use uh, we de deploy to Australia, for example, which is exactly on the other side of the planet, and you can still have a usable, like, useful experience uh, if your internet connection is decent, because the connecting points between the data centers around the world is is through fiber, so it goes by the speed of light. Um, yeah, uh, the weakness now is the company supplying the service. If they go out of business. Uh, you can lose access of your data. Yeah, so that's definitely something uh, people need to uh, be uh, sort of that you make sure you 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 sort of uh, use the business partners uh, that you feel can be uh, are, are reliable, as it were. So yeah, um, um, yeah. So uh, we got to do another poll, and uh, the question here is. Uh, this is a leading question. Uh, maybe you were confident already, so, but do you feel more confident about cloud computing after this session? And the one uh, we are also uh, asking are, are you concerned about storing your cloud records on the cloud? Uh, and then I'm going to roll this poll. I'm going to bring up the start it. You might not be able to run it yet until mm -hmm. I. Uh, so, cloud computing, just give me a second here. So, I'm going to run it, present. There we go. So we let that run for a bit. I think we we will will uh, will write a blog article about the topic uh, or some of the. And 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 add some resources for people who need would like to have more resources about this uh, or get access to more resources. Um, I was going then, to add. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to add that it's 
it's really interesting seeing how there's been a transition to cloud computing in lots of different industries and obviously we're enabling that for plant records but i suppose my former days as a researcher you know i was used i was working with large scale data sets and things like dna sequencing is a good example that's benefited from cloud based computing you know dna is can be you know a very huge data set and and it requires lots of complex processing and uh, storage as well and i think for example the human dna is about 3 billion base pairs or something amazing uh, and and that requires you know gigabytes and gigabytes of data and and you see this a lot with um, plant taxonomy research as well so dna barcoding and sequencing is really reliant on these large scale processes that cannot be done on on premise computing so that's just another example of an industry that's benefited um, from 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 this cloud approach. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's um, it's almost like uh, if you look at evolutionary theory, you know, is is uh, Homo technicus how we sort of evolved into a species that only exists if we have our tools, and then the cloud is an extension of our own. It's a bit too much uh, philosophy, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> uh, OK, so there's another question coming up. Uh, I don't know. If, how do I get to the next one? Uh, no, I, I think we. that was the, uh, that's the only question we had. OK, cool. On that subject real quick, I was watching a, a program last night about the uh, Danish explorers, you know, that uh, were looking, uh, were exploring Greenland and uh, got trapped out there for like three or four years. And I was joking with my wife. It's like, I mean, how did they check their Facebook? Was there, was there a good cell signal? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I th sorry, I think if, if everybody goes back on the same link, um, they should get the the next question. <clears throat> so I'll I'll post the uh, link again. Here we go. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, oh, oh. So are you concerned about storing your plant records on the cloud? Yes, very, yes. Letting this roll a bit longer. Um, sort of a confusing poll because it's sort of hard to. Yeah. Select what you what you intended to say. <laughs> yeah. No, I I realized that now. Yeah, I was. Um... Yeah. Do you mean worried? Yes. Yes. Are you worried? Yes. Because uh, I would say I'm concerned, but like because I really want them on the cloud. <laughs> Oh, oh, what what do you mean? As in, you you're concerned that you you won't be able to, or something, or what? I mean, I'm just concerned in a way of like I, I want to make sure I maintain them, and if anybody were to say like, oh, let's move them off the cloud, I'd be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, the the, the question. No, we 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 uh, to our we we did uh, write these questions a bit late today, so we we didn't maybe uh, pitch them correctly here. But uh, the idea is. Are you concerned about using cloud as a data storage for your plant records in general? Um, yeah. For us, it's something that we don't even think about. Yeah, I, I think that's a, quite a large percentage is, is looking at this as, uh, you know, are we going to make our own electricity or are we going to get it from somebody else? Or <laughs> uh, maybe that's a bad analogy, but uh, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, it's a very, very much from any standard approach to, uh, and I know a lot of larger institutions are, are trying to get to everything to cloud if they can. Uh, you know, that's a very much um, a contemporary approach to running a, a business, you might say. So. Um, I, I want to just jump in with one thing before we, this was years ago that we moved more to the cloud, but there was a fear that somebody would run into a, a telephone pole on route 116 and everything would go down. And they, we, at that time, we didn't understand that there were uh, uh, server farms everywhere, you know, or, or that was the, that was the plan. We didn't realize that. I did. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no, no. It's 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 like a you know, internet is almost like a super organism that is so resilient. You know, if if one thing goes down somewhere, you know, it still keeps on going, and and uh, and also, but but you are of course reliant on having an internet connection, and and uh, many 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 companies or institutions had more problems with reliability if you go ten years back. You know, that was more because uh, internet service providers and technology in general was less reliable. Uh, but uh, I think many of us now, especially now after I could say maybe through COVID, people have really understood how important it, important uh, uh, reliable internet is, but also uh, any people in that industry has, has basically improved their, uh, their, uh, their service level. And, and, and that, that makes cloud less problematic in that respect as well. Um, does anybody know how much energy all this the whole internet takes like what takes more energy the uh cryptocurrency servers or all the rest of it uh well i i, I wouldn't guess but uh, we, we know that crypt depend there are different crypto one thing to be clear as well there are some crypto currencies that are very uh resource demanding uh, for the for the mining and some are not so so there's a difference there it's not like generally uh, and that, that's the more older cryptocurrencies like bitcoin and stuff they they consume a lot of energy to create new coins which is uh, crazy uh, uh, but uh, whether they i don't know the numbers compared to the rest of the internet kind of thing it's a bit of a difficult question but um, uh, the, the, i suppose the argument is that the the uh, data centers from microsoft and from google they at least perform a, a, a useful service, uh, one would assume. Uh, but there are people, as you could argue, playing video games. How much <laughs> is that in terms of using energy? A lot of things, with frivolous things humans do that doesn't necessarily. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. That was a good point. Uh, OK, so we got the final conclusion here. So it uh, looks like uh, quite a large group are not concerned but there's a small group that is i wouldn't say you are small but i mean as in there's a percentage here that is very concerned uh, and then uh, i would uh, uh you know you can subtract one from those uh, first three because i uh, i totally misunderstood the poll and i was trying to say uh i strongly agreed with not being very concerned on those <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, okay yeah, yeah. that, that <laughs> I, I think we we may have uh, if, if flo the, the the pool was a bit flawed there. I think. Thank you. Yeah. That okay. Seemed like a double negative to me in a way. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, maybe we should rerun this one. Yeah. Wait. It's an interesting question from Martin and Gary on mm -hmm. offline capabilities as well on the cloud, um, such as in the Floria app. But also, is there a potential for this in Hortis? That's a very good question. Yeah, so we've done a reasonable amount of research on that already. Uh, we know that um, definitely that's needed, uh, especially with gardens who have, uh, I think I've yet to meet a garden who doesn't have issues with connectivity somewhere in their garden. So uh, so the first thing we are have worked on, which uh, is to make sure that there's a level of reliability in sense of that you never lose data. <laughs> when you lose connectivity and that it behaves in a predictable manner so that you can, when you get connectivity back again, you can carry on. But going beyond that, we definitely um, will work on that. We don't have any plans to have any rich capabilities early on, but definitely further down the line, yes, 100%. Um, 
one thing we're going to look at, for example, is uh, maybe uh, prefetching data and stuff, uh, because some gardens probably know which part of their garden that doesn't have connectivity. Uh, so we might look into that so that you can have some data loaded for those sections so that when you reach those areas, you can still work on the data to some degree. Uh, but but uh, early on, we don't have, uh, uh, we're not going to have much in terms of capability for offline work, uh, other than that you should be able to do the task you're working on until you get back online. Uh, but that will, we would definitely work on that 100%. Okay, that was a really good question. Um, and uh, we have, uh, thank you very much. We, uh, one thing I wanted to say, next webinar, we're gonna talk a bit more about Hortis again. So we, haven't, we have talked more about Hortis in the general, but next webinar we'll, we'll have a few more demos and, 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 and show more things. Uh, so we didn't focus on that so much today, but, uh, but uh, uh, so tune into that one. And uh, uh, yeah, I think we should say thank you everybody for joining and taking part. It was very, very useful to get some feedback from you as well, especially the last few comments was very helpful. and we going to make sure we can address those and um, uh, hope to see you soon on the next time we have this webinar. We're not sure if that will be in a month or two, uh, but we'll keep you posted as you always. And uh, yeah, have a great uh, afternoon or morning Thank or whatever you, you are. <laughs> Thanks, Bye,